If you're looking for success in the vacation rental industry, Heather Bayer and the team at CottageBlogger.com are here to show you that it's entirely within reach. Welcome to Vacation Rental Success, the show that features interviews with industry experts, successful vacation rental owners, and more, all geared toward helping you make it happen. Here's your host, Heather Bayer. Well, hello once again, and welcome to another episode of Vacation Rental Success. And it's an absolute delight to be with you. I have just come back from the weekend, a great, great weekend at the Podcast Movement Conference in Dallas. And while I was there, I spoke on a panel about podcast promotion. I networked with 600 other podcasters. Now, here's a story. I spoke to somebody who had come through. I think they'd come from uh, from either England or Scotland to the conference, and they arrived at, at Dallas at immigration. And when they were asked what they were doing in the US, this person said, well, I've come to a conference. And the immigration officer said, well, what sort of conference would that be? And he said, it's a podcasting conference. And apparently the immigration officer gave him a look as if to say, you could have come in here in full Star Trek gear saying you were going to a comic, going to Comic-Con and I would have been less surprised than I am with you telling me you're going to a podcasting conference. The reason for this, and, and I'm taking this directly from somebody I met at the conference, a great guy called Lou Mongello, who, um, who has a a podcast on Walt Disney World. Uh, and we're going to talk about a bit more about that later. But on his on his site, he actually talks a little bit about um, podcasting and says that the blogger to podcaster ratio is approximately 2,000 to 1, meaning typically there are 2,000 bloggers to each podcaster covering a specific subject. And then he says, think about it this way. If you filled the Rose Bowl with bloggers, only 46 people in the stadium would be podcasters and only six of them would be female. So we are a relatively small but um, extremely motivated and enthusiastic group. And one of the topics over the weekend was about the future of podcasting. And we heard about the explosion in the growth of listenership. And that's being thanks to things like the iOS podcast app being built into um, iOS 8. Also, the launch of Apple's new CarPlay and Google's Android Auto, both of which are bringing podcasts into er nearly every new vehicle uh, alongside things like Stitcher Radio which means that podcasts are going to be just a click away for anybody who gets in a car and people who listen to podcasts regularly will be able to, they'll be able to set up the podcast that they want to listen to and then get in the car and, and it's, um, it's going to, that they're going to be streamed to them, which is fantastic. Um, I said this before, said this um, uh, in a couple of earlier podcasts, and I wrote about why vacation rental owners and agencies should be podcasting, and I did that in a uh, in parts one and two a couple of weeks ago. If you haven't taken a look at that, I really encourage you to do so because travel is such an un underserved niche in the podcasting world, and it really is ripe for explosion. You know, what about if you could get in there and market your location like Lou does for Disney? He has a massive uh, site and he has a, a podcast that has 374 episodes on it. And that's just about Disney. Imagine what you could do for your own location. I have a bit of a project I'm going to be working on over the um, the fall months, let's say through late September, October and November. And I'm going to be preparing my new podcast for my rental agency and it's going to be called Cottage Insider. And, and I've mentioned it uh, before, but I just want to expand on that a little more because... I'm going to take three months over getting the podcast ready for launch in January. 
uh, just about at the time when people are starting to plan their vacations. And what I would really like to do is to work with a few other people who are really enthusiastic about doing the same thing. So is this for you? Would you like to get a podcast started for your vacation location? Are you willing to work for a couple of months in um, getting your podcast set up, getting all your equipment ready, organizing it, doing a fair amount of learning along with me and building up episodes, interviews, uh, things that you can talk about yourself that you can launch your podcast with? If so, I really, really want to hear from you. If you're interested in getting involved with this, and this is a VR podcasting group, and we're going to have things like a a Facebook uh, group, private Facebook group, where we're going to meet on a fairly regular basis and discuss uh, what we're doing, where we're at, um, share all our experiences. I'm also going to be preparing some tutorials and giving some support from the experience I've had over doing vacation rental success for the past 18 months or so. If you're interested, email me at heather at cottageblogger.com and let me know. I'm looking for around five really enthusiastic and motivated people. And I'll tell you what, I'm going to put up a a page on the website and it will be at cottageblogger.com forward slash VR podcasting. That won't be up probably until the weekend. So I'm going to put a little bit more about what we're what we'll be um, going through on this journey on that page. So if you're interested, email me, let me know over the weekend, pop over to the website and go to cottageblogger.com forward slash VR podcasting. This is going to be a lot of fun and I can't wait to get together with around five of you and get this off and running because what we're going to do is document absolutely everything we do. And then at the end, we're, we're going to be sharing this with the vacation rental world and just showing them what we've done, how I hesitate to say easy it is because I think it's going to be quite the journey for us. But we will get that all down and every step of the way we'll be documenting it and and then sharing it. So looking forward to that. So my topics today are on damages and complaints. And these are, you know, there's two issues that are top of my agenda at this time of year. And with the agency, we're now oh, just one week away from the end of the season. And it's been a particularly, well, it's been our best year ever. We've had typically 150 to 170 families in our properties every single week. And and despite, you know, with the best will in the world, there's going to be things happening. There's going to be complaints from guests. There's going to be claims of damage from owners. And we deal with both as fairly as we possibly can. But I wanted to talk today just about some of these issues that we have, because I'm pretty sure that we all share the same types of issue. Let's start by talking about um, claims on a damage deposit. And it was really interesting hearing from Tansy Forster on, on our interview just recently when she was talking about the fact she never takes a damage deposit. And over the many years, the the over a decade that she's been renting her places in Normandy, she has never found it necessary to collect a damage deposit or or even consider making any sort of claim. She puts it down to the way she screens her guests, um, the way she attracts and appeals to them via all her listings and advertising. And she just gets the sort of people that really match up to the property that she has. But I do understand that you might think differently. You might want to uh, take some form of of damage deposit prior to guest arriving. So it's really important that you think about what risk you're going to take, what what you're willing to 
accept as wear and tear. You know, what constitutes normal wear and tear? You need to decide what sort of situation would be bad enough to accept the invariable stress that will follow if you make a claim. And there are really no hard and fast rules on when, how and what you should claim for. It's, it's a judgment call on your part. But I wanted to go through some guidelines that might be, might be helpful for you. And I appreciate that we are reaching the end of the season and you may already have had some issues and uh, so, so maybe this is coming a little late in the season. But, you know, it's, uh, it's evergreen material. It's, these are evergreen tips. It doesn't really matter at what time of the year you're getting them. You can apply them at, at any time. So my first tip here is to it, how important it is to tell your guests what you expect from them. It's, it's things like being clear about what you want them to do, Let, let's say on checkout. So let's say you, you provide a cleaning service. Majority of properties do provide a cleaning service, whether it is included in the rental rate or it's an added fee. But it's still important to be very specific about how you want the place left when they've gone. And there's still places... And I know they're they're definitely here in Ontario where guests are asked to leave the property in an as found condition and still asked to don the gloves, the rubber gloves and clean wash basins and toilets. I I actually think that this is an archaic thing to, to do. It's a practice that probably should have died out several years ago, but I know it's still alive and kicking in in many places and and if that's the case with you well then that's fine as long as you provide a checklist for your guests to follow as a reminder and that they know they really do know before they come and before they part with money what you're expecting them to do before they leave you know if you leave your guests in no doubt as to their responsibilities it it does make it difficult for them to challenge you in case of a dispute now, the second tip is, is one that I, I tell all my guests in our agency. And it has become a very, very helpful tip for many of them. And we just say that they should keep a digital camera to hand to record any instances of damage. If you're going to make a claim of any sort, it's so important that you have the evidence to back it up because any claim for additional cleaning or damage is going to result in an argument. You know, on every occasion that we've had to deal with a claim, the guests have argued the details and in general, they refuted any suggestion that they didn't comply with the terms and conditions of the agreement. Mainly because standards vary and what maybe an owner considers to be a good condition that the place is left. Quite often the guests have a different standard and you never know. It's the standard they keep up with at home and it just doesn't match the owners. And that's where, as they say, that's when the fight started. So keeping a digital camera and taking pictures that is really, really important that those photographs have a date and time stamp because it's the best way of proving your case should it should it come to court, which of course is the uh, the action of last resort, but in cases where there's where there is damage that is clearly not of an accidental nature, it's it's perhaps got a high dollar value, then it is really really important to have that photographic evidence with the date and time stamp. The third tip is to assess the cost of replacement items fairly. And I do recall a time, and I'm going back seven or eight years ago, we had an owner of a property who seemed to feel that the damage deposit was her personal dipping fund so that after every rental had uh, had passed and the renters had gone home, she could claim on something or other and just dip into the damage deposit and take some money. And we realized this very quickly after her very first rental. And there was a complaint about a 
uh, a blind being broken. And that was fine. We actually, we, we didn't bother the guest with that. We covered it from our own funds. When the next week came and passed and there was a, at that, that time, it was a broken child's chair that the owner claimed was of quite considerable value, which seemed to me a little odd because I'd visited the property and not seen anything of that nature. So we asked for a photograph of the damaged chair, which was sent to us, and it turns out it was one of those plastic ch uh, outdoor chairs that you can buy in a supermarket. And she had claimed around $90.00. For this chair. We very quickly realised what was going on here and, and certainly by the third time, the third claim, we, uh, we were able to assess that perhaps this was not the best working relationship and, and it was terminated fairly quickly. But it really got us thinking about the nature of uh, claims and the value of, of items. Because during the course of a rental, there's going to be the potential that a glass or two are going to be broken, a plate or a mug might get chipped, which is, of course, acceptable wear and tear. If, if you're worried about valuable uh, items of dinnerware getting broken, then they have no place in a rental home anyway. It's another topic, but it's, it's just important that when you're thinking about what items you're going to have in the, in the vacation home, that you consider that there are there are going to be losses at some time and just make sure it's that they are items that you are fully prepared to replace without having to resort to make a claim. Because if you've left your best crystal glassware or heirloom china for the guests to use, you can't expect them to be cared for in the way that you would. These, uh, these guests are on vacation. I know that doesn't mean they, they should disrespect the items that you leave for them to use. But it's, it does mean they, that being on vacation, people don't tend to be as careful as they are at home. And finally on this one, it's so important to be objective at all times because it's so easy to get upset, particularly when you think that a rental group has abused your trust by leaving the place in a mess. And I know it may cost you extra in your own time or money for additional cleaning. But you know, if you've balanced that against the other times when the property's left in an immaculate condition, you might just want to write it off to experience and just simply decide, I'm never going to rent to those people again. I agree it would be really wonderful if every changeover was easy and without incident, but that's unlikely in, in our business. And we need to be taking the rough with the smooth and accepting that standards of cleaning vary and doing that is going to, just going to help you to assess whether you should claim or not. And my yardstick is simply this. If it will cause me more stress and aggravation to make a claim rather than just accept it as a disappointing episode and move on, then I'll take it on the chin and look forward to better guests next time. One final tip on this, uh, this, this topic you need to be very clear in your property guide, in your welcome book, what you will accept and what you won't. And this is an example of what we say in our guide. And I shall put, um, I'll put a copy of this in the show notes so, um, so you have it to review. So we say, we do understand that you're on vacation and accidents happen. So if you break a glass, chip a plate or crack the coffee pot, don't worry about it. Just let us know so we can replace them for the next guests. If you spill something on a carpet, use the spot cleaner provided immediately. And if it's a larger spill, just let us know so that we can take the appropriate action. Damage to screen doors is costly and time consuming. So please take extra care when using these doors and prevent pets from scratching at them. We don't make indiscriminate charges, but ask you to appreciate that we're proud of our property and maintain it to be a delightful vacation home for all our guests. Please ensure that all members of your group respect the cottage guidelines we outline in this manual and treat our property and its surrounds with care. We've got other notes on leaving the cottage, you know, how, how people should leave the cottage and, the, and a checklist and 
we do have a cleaning service and we out we outline what we'd like them to do before they leave. And uh, and that seems to work really, really well. I just want to move on now to what happens the other way around. And that is when you get a complaint from a guest and uh, and what you do about it. But let's just kick off with... Let's just move on to the sticky topic of complaints because no matter how well you prepare for your guests, there's going to come a time when someone makes a complaint. And we've had we've had our fair share of those this summer. And some of them have come as a complete surprise and have been very, very tricky to deal with. Uh, mainly because we we're not on site we we're not we're not that property management company um and we we often have to take the word of a guest alongside what an owner has said and and make uh, make a judgment call i just wanted to talk about the the causes of complaints you know it could be a breakdown in an appliance or a, or an amenity Something like, you know, a fridge breaking down in very high, when, when the temperature's really high, it's hot and humid, um, the fridge breaks down and you're not able to get somebody out there to fix it straight away. That would be a legitimate complaint if that situation went on for a couple of days. Perhaps a hot tub that was promised is not working or it's cloudy when guests arrive. It's these sorts of things that could definitely cause complaint. It could be just a misunderstanding over an expectation. Uh, Perhaps a listing has been misread or a perception of an aspect of the property has been misunderstood. Or it could simply be a disgruntled guest who transfers the disappointment over poor weather to a complaint about the property. You know, we we all do this you get on holiday and if the weather isn't as uh, lovely as it's expected to be, people tend to, to want somebody or something to blame. And and they may just look around for something to complain about. It actually makes them feel better if if they can take their disappointment about the weather not turning out to be what they expected it to be and direct that at something else. But what, whatever the nature of the grievance, it's worthwhile being really ready for it to happen and just to have some solutions in place. Most guests are going to take a, a pragmatic approach to an occasional situation where a breakdown occurs and they will just be happy to get a prompt response and have it fixed or replaced. And and often that very prompt response to a complaint or a situation will result in a happier guest, uh, sometimes even happier guest than the one who's had no issue at all. So so that, that's quite an interesting aspect of, of customer service, and it's one that's well documented. But, you know, there are a few who are going to use any situation to demand a refund or compensation of some sort. So it's really worthwhile being prepared for that. So when you do get one of these complaints or calls about something that's gone wrong, the first thing you need to think, well, the first thing you need to do is not take it personally, not to become defensive, just simply to step back, listen to what they're saying and and be as reasonable and calm as you possibly can. Often it would be a case of taking down the details of the um, of the complaint and just saying, can I call you back in a few minutes? I just want to assess it or talk it over with my husband or wife and then call you back. That actually gives you a chance to sit back and just have a think about the nature of the complaint and what you're actually going to do about it rather than to have to have a knee-jerk reaction immediately on the phone. And what you need to think about is the fact that you may think that something's mildly inconvenient for you. It might be a significant event for somebody else. So let's say loss of the satellite TV for a few hours is not going to bother most people. 
But if they booked a property to have a weekend away focused on a sports event and disruption prevents them from watching it, those people are going to be impacted in a greater way. Another example might be somebody arriving to a waterfront property, coming for a weekend of canoeing and finds that the canoe that was listed on the applic- on the um, listing had been damaged the previous week and was unusable. And so you can see how that the nature of that type of issue is going to impact some people more than others. So it's really important to start with that you make it clear in your contract, in your terms and conditions of rental and the guest guide, what your po- what your policies actually are. Here's an example. Um, equipment and facilities are provided at the discretion of the owner. And while every attempt is made to ensure that such equipment is in working order for the duration of the rental period, should a breakdown or some other situation occur that renders the element unusable, we do not accept responsibility for refunding the guest for the lack of use of these equipment or facilities. The equipment and facilities referred to include, but are not exclusive to, such items as watercraft, motors, televisions, VCRs, satellite equipment, internet access, hot tubs, saunas and jacuzzis. That is just an example. And of course, you can use your discretion in terms of refund or compensation, but it's really good to have a clause in your contract that you can refer back to in case of unreasonable complaint. And once again, I shall put this uh, that, that little snippet from the terms and conditions, that clause, into the show notes for you to check out. Also consider whether the guests actually gave you a chance to rectify the situation. And we did have we did have one of these just recently where a a guest complained after the after the fact they got home and then complained that the satellite TV had been broken for the whole for the duration of their vacation. They weren't able to watch a sports event they'd gone to watch and therefore they demanded a refund. In that case, we said that no, we were not given the chance to rectify the situation. The guests didn't tell us while they were there. They elected to save it until they got home. And and unfortunately, because we didn't have that opportunity to make it good, there would be no refund. And we believe that was absolutely fair. If they don't tell you about an issue that causes disappointment until after they leave, you're probably not expected to to compensate them. I mean, some guests will say they didn't want to bother anyone or that they managed this, managed the situation. We managed it, but should not, should not have had their stay disrupted by it. Once again, you just need that clear statement in your contract and guest guide that requires you to be informed as soon as an issue arises. Um, so then once again, there's no requirement to refund any money if they complain after they get home. Now, what in one area, you may really have to consider um, what your refund policy would actually be. And one of these, of course, is in terms of uh, weather, uh, hurricanes and mandatory evacuation and that type of situation. You know, if extreme weather co- is cause for guests to leave a property or to delay arrival, because of imminent danger and and or evacuation notices, you need to consider what your course of action is going to be. One of the best ways of handling this is to ensure that you offer travel insurance of some kind. Where guests, I mean, they, they can take it out or they can decline to take it out. But if they decline, then they really lose any opportunity to claim anything back should their stay be disrupted or even prevented. In general, uh, the travel policies that cover vacation rentals pay benefits if inclement weather causes delay or cancellation of travel and if a named hurricane causing cancellation of travel to the insured's destination makes it inaccessible or uninhabitable. So if they elect not to purchase travel insurance, you shouldn't have to compensate in any way for a loss of vacation time owing to a weather-related, indus- uh, weather-related incident. And then we come just come back to essential amenities. We talked briefly about things like TVs and satellites. But if an essential amenity breaks down, such as a refrigerator in summer or the only source of heating in winter, 
and you're an, unable to get it fixed, then a partial or complete refund will probably be necessary. Even with all the clauses in place, there may be times when you just feel it's right to compensate your guests for something that happened. But it doesn't necessarily have to be monetary compensation. Here's some options. Offer them a discount for a future stay. You know, if they've, if they've had some discomfort because of a power outage or in, in any other weather-related incident um, or, or even the breakdown of a non-essential amenity, it might be quite nice to say, well, if they really enjoyed the property apart from that, please come back again in the future and let me give you a 10, 15, 20% discount on a future stay. That's a really nice touch. Another way is to add on an extra day if there's one available and uh, and if they're able to manage that. It, it's that That's n probably not the best option because usually travelers have planned their trip home. So it may not be something that's of great value to them. One we have done this past summer on a couple of occasions and the, these are as a result of you know, fairly minor inconveniences uh, in one in one situation the uh, the the water pump failed and it was it was out for about three and a half hours but we were able to get a plumber in fairly quickly but we sent them a gift basket for from um, just the local town we were able to get a gift basket delivered to them uh, on another occasion when guests had um, had problem actually accessing the property. Oh, on another occasion, the uh, propane ran out during a barbecue. And although the owner was able to deliver another propane tank, it, it took some time, by which time the guests had had to transfer their dinner indoors and put it in the oven. And it, it wasn't quite the same, wasn't quite what they were expecting. So what the owner did was give them a voucher to go and have a meal at a nearby restaurant, which, which was gratefully received. So whether you compensate or not, it's entirely up to you. And, and it often depends on the relationship you have with your guests. And if you are fair with claims for refunds, you've made your policies clear, you'll find that threats of negative reviews should not be a cause for concern. In fact, they should never be a cause for concern. If, if you feel that you have treated your guests fairly and respectfully. Well, that's about as much as I'm going to cover today on uh, damages and claims. And I hope you found that helpful. It's actually been a, <laughs> it's been quite cathartic for me to actually talk some of these through because we get to the end of the summer and it's it, it can be quite draining to to deal with with these on a day-to-day -day basis because you know the majority of our, our customers are having a fabulous time in their properties but they don't tend to tell us about it until they've they've got back sometimes a few weeks later and that's when the reviews start to come in so at this moment you, you there's times when you think all you're getting is is complaints and claims when in fact it is just a tiny minority that are having issues. And for you with your own property, you could go for, you could even go a whole season without getting a, a single problem with, uh, with damage or getting any complaints from your guests. And I do hope that that's the way that your summer has gone. So I just want to thank you for listening once again. Uh, there will be some show notes here that, uh, that cover off a couple of these things that I've talked about. So uh, take a look, go to cottageblogger.com forward slash VRS 38 and check out the show notes. And I'd love you to make a comment. Let me know if you've had a damage claim or if you've, uh, if, if you've had any complaints from your guests, I'd love to hear how you dealt with them. So once again, really appreciate you staying through to the end and, uh, and listening to this podcast. As ever, I'll be back with you again soon. This episode of Vacation Rental Success is over, but don't worry, Heather will be back soon. Want more great resources? Visit cottageblogger.com for tips, tricks, downloads, and strategies to help you achieve profit from your vacation rental business. Oh,